just got back to Van. I don't even know what to say, really. So I just oh. really don't know what to say. So we've arrived in Sevilla after a really awful, stressful journey through the city. Absolute chaos. Bikes pulling in front of you, cars beeping everywhere. Then an ambulance came down wrong side of the road towards me, so I was swerving out of way that. I just had a coffee to calm down a little bit. And now we're in Sevilla looking for this market again. First impressions of Sevilla, obviously we don't like cities, but coming through, glancing oh, at some of the buildings were gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. But it's like with all cities, it's really spread out. Like it looks like gorgeous, but you'd have to walk miles. It's really, really spread out, really busy. So you're probably just going to, we'll give you a flash of all the buildings that we saw driving through. And that's about as much as you're going to see. <laughs> Oh, just don't like cities. It's just far, far too busy as this. We're literally going to find this market and then get out of here. Sorry, Sevilla, or whatever you call, but it's not for us. <laughs> well, we found it. We found it. We travelled all this way and we've actually found it. And there's four stalls. How many? Four. Tell them again. Four. 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 Just four. And One all of the same old stuff that you get where it's like regurgitated leather out of a factory, all stuff like that. Nothing that's like actually proper handmade, handcrafted. What people think hippie is rather than what hippie actually is, you know? Just like, it's like we're forgotten people now, you know? When you look beneath the surface of a city, any city whatsoever, it's all the same, isn't it? It's all exactly the same if you look beneath it. Doesn't matter whether you've got massive skyscrapers that you know people think are absolutely gorgeous, magnificent modern buildings, or you've got really old, beautiful buildings, or you've got massive cathedrals, whatever. Look beneath the surface and it's all the same. You've got homelessness, masses amounts of homelessness, massive differentiation between classes and earnings. You've got graffiti everywhere, you've got litter everywhere. From where I'm looking here, on the back of every single bench there is graffiti. There is a mattress dumped by the bin, you've got burger, burger bar after burger bar. It's just all exactly the same in every single city. Really disappointing because I think what people do is they come to a city and they see the bits that are advertised almost like like in a relationship in a, when you first start getting together with somebody and it might not be a great relationship, you've got them rose tinted glasses on and you're just seeing all the good bits. It's like that, isn't it? You're reading the brochure and you're seeing what you see in the brochure because that's what you've been directed to look at. You're not looking beneath the surface and you see these tree-lined streets and beautiful buildings and you're not looking beneath the surface because that's not what you've been directed. It's like misdirection, isn't it? That's what it is and it's really disappointing. I just got back to van and windows being smashed and I just I don't even know what to say really so I just oh. really don't know what to say. It's okay. We'll sort it. I just don't know why people do stuff like this. I absolutely hate cities and busy. You don't get this when you go to small places. I just I hate this is meant, it's meant to be a posh place and it's a V. Oh, go there, go there, don't miss it, don't miss it. Look, it's just, it's not, it's not a nice place, is it? Clearly, we're parked on a really posh street. We paid for parking. We aren't even parked on any back streets. I don't even know if they're taking anything. We're going to have to call police. I don't believe it. I don't want to touch anything, obviously, because, look, it's all sharp here and everything. But um, I don't know why they've broken in. Let me have a look, let me, who's my cardigan show it? Not the little fingerprint, oh, will they? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. We're literally just saying now what, what a day, what a couple of days this has been. First with the fruit and then, you know, everything. And literally just saying that, I turned corner and I said, oh my God, it's been smashed. Can't I'll believe rifle it. rifled through you. It was all glass in my bloody electrics. Right. I think they've tried to get through the back entrance. Let me check that. I haven't even checked that yet. I need to check side pocket first, Reese. All right, love. Just want to make sure there's something smashed. 
No, I wonder why they haven't tried to break that. That's weird, isn't it? Oh dear. They've got in through the side? No, they don't look like they've been able to get in. I don't know why they want to try to smash the side window. Gone looking for money, haven't they? Doesn't make any sense. Ah. It's all right, Daisy. Ah. It's okay. They've got in here. Daisy's thing out of that pocket there is there. That's come out of that. They've rifled through that. How do you call the police? Excuse me. How do you call the police? How do we call the police? Police. 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 What's the number? What's the number? Number is 061 062 or 112. Oh, 112. 112. Mm. Okay. Gracias. Yeah, oh. Look at the state of this. I've forgotten that you've got that thing, haven't you? It's that new, that new thing, isn't it, where you can call police on the same number everywhere. What is it? I don't know, but she said it's 112 for. That's and that it. will give you an English speaking. 112, yeah, yeah. It's from all, it, you call it from all over the world, don't you? I don't even know where I am. Um. Hello, you speak English? Thank you. This is the emergency number. I'm an old. Wow. You speak English? Hello, um, we... Thank you. I've just got back to my van parked. Um, we're in Sevilla. Um, we've just got back to the van and somebody smashed all the side window of the van. We've just come back and it's just sma the whole window smashed through. Somebody smashed it. There's glass everywhere. Um, we don't know where to go to get it fixed. Um, we've got no idea if we could, we're probably going to need a crime number for the insurance. Um, Um, we are next to um, a park. I'll just get the name of the park up for you. Alameda. There is a police station there in Sevilla Capital. Casa Ella Adam, the police station near Plaza, P L A Z A. Plaza, right. There is a police station there. You can report it there. Right, okay. Um, I'm not sure how to secure my van. Thank you very much for your call, madam. I'm afraid we need to hang up because this is the emergency line. All right, thank you. Thanks. Bye. Good night, madam. You're welcome, madam. Goodbye. Good night, madam. Leather, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Report it online or walk to the police station. They don't know if we're allowed to drive it with the window smashed, and they need to get. I need to get off the line because it's an emergency line. So what do we do now? So now all I can think we do is we sweep it all out. We're going to have to drive it round to this, the police station. Of all the places we've ever been, all across Europe and the UK, this has to be the worst. Right, let, have you got me a sweeping brush? No, let's start clearing Stop now. filming and start clearing now. Right, so um, I'm not feeling this teary. I've calmed down a bit. We've spent about an hour clearing out the van and all the grass, glass from around the van. That's taken us about an hour. Basically, we rang the police. Um, as you saw, they said, basically, get off the phone. Um, they couldn't tell us whether we were OK to drive the vehicle without the side window in. They couldn't answer that question. They just wanted us to, you know, they said walk to the police station, but that's a bit difficult because that meant that one of us had to stay with the van and one of us had to walk, which left one of us quite vulnerable in an area where we're now not feeling very safe. So we didn't want to do that either. So we ha we did actually come across, there was um, a policeman that just came past in a, in a police car. Reese managed to run over and speak to him. Um, basically, he told Reese report it to a policeman. <laughs> so he told him to basically go to the police station and report it. So 
Um, we've ended up, we've tried to find a glass um, repair place that'll do windscreen repair. Um, we've found one, meant to be open until seven o'clock. It's shut um, 20 minutes earlier than it should have done. So we've rung our cover with our insurers, uh, who have, we have European breakdown cover and I have glass cover and all that. I pay for all these extras just to make sure we've got everything. Um, and apparently the cover that we've got, the European cover that you get, does not include anything to do with thefts or, um, or broken windscreens or anything like that. They, all they do is basically pick your vehicle up and take it to somewhere for it to be repaired and you to pay for it. Um, so I've, the insurance company has said we can call them back tomorrow um, and speak to them tomorrow about our insurance actually covering it. Yeah, so it's not been great. So we're now just trying to decide, do we park up here tonight and sell or tape the window up um, and wait for it to open in the morning, get a quote, ring the insurance, get it fixed? Do we drive out? Because essentially it's just like having your window down, isn't it, really? So it's not it's not really doing any damage. Um, do we drive out to somewhere that sort of um, feels a bit safer and a bit nicer um, and then drive back in in the morning? So we're trying to decide what to do at the moment. I was literally saying to Emma on the way back to the van, which we didn't film, I said, I feel like, and these are my exact words, I promise you, the camera just wasn't rolling. And I said to her, I said, I feel like there's a story to this vlog. It, it's just it's just one of those things, isn't it? You couldn't you couldn't you couldn't write it. Like, got back to the van after saying that, and I was just like, I said it really calmly. I think because I was that shocked because of what I'd just said, that I was I just went into absolute stunned silence, and I just sort of went. I might have even been filming at that point. I can't remember, but I just went. Oh, the van's window's been smashed. The disbelief after I'd just said everything I said about cities and after Emma had said everything about cities and the reason why we don't come to cities is this, you know, because we're, we're always, I guess, frightened of this happening. We don't like cities, they're too busy. And I just, I just went into absolute stunned silence because I just couldn't believe it, I still can't. I've stopped short personally, and I guess Emma will have her personal feelings as well, but my personal feeling is I have stopped short at blaming Spain, if you like. I love Spain so much and I'm not for one minute, that's not, what I'm feeling, that's not the feelings is, oh, I'm never coming to Spain again, because I know that 99.9% that of Spanish people are not like this, and they're certainly not like this in the mountain places and the villages that we enjoy exploring. Um, but, but yeah, my, my feelings are angry towards the city because, you know, it, I've literally explored every single place in the UK and a lot of Europe, and this has never happened. So, you know, that's my feelings at the moment. I'm sure they might change, I don't know, but you sort of get I'm kind of I'm kind of imagining the comments now in my head you know of oh well you get good and bad in all cities and stuff like that you know and, and I suppose you know I'll kind of come round to thinking that you know that this doesn't represent the city at the moment obviously I can't stand the place I think that it's like like Reece says that it, you know in, there are good there is good and bad in every single place that you go there are good and bad people all over the world I never blame an area. I just, I don't like cities purely because, and I've said it a million times, you get this disparity between people who have a lot and people who have nothing. When you get that disparity, you also quite often get people that behave in ways that they're not meant to behave. Um, and I've worked for years and years and years. Um, most of my career has been working with people who offend. Um, and most of Reese's career has been working with, with young people um, who are troubled and who offend. And one of the things that you quite often find is that people are struggling in their own lives. Not to say that obviously everybody that struggles does anything wrong because they don't, you know, but it's people, the people that do things do it for a reason. Doesn't excuse it, but they do it for a reason. And it's often because they've got things going on in their own lives, things are not great etc etc um, you know there might be poverty there might be lots of different things going on doesn't excuse that behavior you still choose your own behavior in this world you still choose the way that you want people to see you and you choose the way that you want people to treat you so therefore you choose the way you want to treat other people that's the way that I see in things in life but it certainly is a reasoning as to why things happen and you get more of that reasoning, more of that, those things that happen in cities, partly because they're a big population, 
but also because you've got this disparity as a result that influences people's behaviour and quite often you get this type of thing where you get higher crime rates and all that sort of thing and you don't get that in these little kind of sleepy villages that we go and visit because there isn't that disparity between people's incomes as much between what people have and don't have people value what they've got more people are not stressed people are not trying to keep up with everybody else you don't have all of that other stuff as well in these sort of smaller places now in nature and we're, out, we're just out in nature and we're not even in a, in a town or whatever just while we were having a coffee before we came back to the van i said i don't like being in these kind of cities and trying to find the stuff that we want to look for trying to find what you know some our vibe within a city i don't like it and i just don't want to do it again and he was like no agreed we definitely won't do this again it's not our thing um you know we try and give you varied content you see we want to go to different places and give you that variation as well but this is just not worth it we don't belong in cities. I don't belong in a city. Look at me. <laughs> you know, we belong out in nature. We belong in the mountains and the forests and the lakes. And I think what I've tried to do is I've tried to give it, I'll call it that world. I've tried to give that world a chance, I think, you know, and I've, I've tried to kind of, yeah, give it a chance, you know, and just say, maybe we're missing something here. Yes, it does have beautiful buildings. Oh, look at that architecture, you know, in that lovely building. And I've tried to do that, and I've been proven, I've been proven right, or have I been proven wrong? I think I've been, I've been proven right, I guess, in the fact that I don't like them, I don't belong there, we don't belong there. Who would, who would do that to somebody's property? And whether they're new or not, what they've done is attacked our home. Do you know what I mean? You imagine somebody coming and, and kicking your front door down, that's how it feels to us. Um, so no, I certainly won't be bringing my home to, to these cities ever again to explore for good content or no good content. From now on, our content will be where we belong and, and how we want to do it. And I won't, I won't be trying to find us within a city anymore. Do you know what? We don't, we, we, and we genuinely do not let stuff like this spoil things. You know, we might get upset for a few minutes or feel angry for a few minutes like anybody else would, but we don't, we don't let it fester. We don't let it sit with us. We don't carry it on. Um, we'll just make a decision that we're not going to do something again or we're going to try a different place again or whatever. You know, we, we just make that decision we, and then we move on from it because it's not worth letting something like this or anything else that happens in your life. You know, you will have bad things happening in your life as well at times and it's not worth letting it get you down because if you do, those people have won do that sort of thing. You know, they've won because they've affected and impacted your life for longer. They've not gone home and thought about what they've done and it impacted their life, do you know? But it's impacting your life if you let it. So it's all about choice, isn't it? And for me, my choice is, it's, I, I want, some people call it forgiveness. I don't really think it is that. I think it's just about letting go. And so my choice is to just kind of let go of this now move forward, get the window fixed and carry on enjoying our holiday. And if by some strange, weird coincidence, the person who's done this happens to come across our YouTube video, <laughs> I really hope you get your life yeah. sorted out, you know, because uh, I really feel sorry for you. You know, you're obviously very troubled and I genuinely, you know, from my heart, hope you get your life sorted out. Make better out. choices. Yeah. Make but, better choices. You know, don't do this. Hopefully, if you do, like I say, one in a million chance, come across our video. You never know. Hopefully, by watching how it's made us feel, it'll make you make better, yeah, better choices. Yeah, change your story and make it go in a different direction, because everybody can, you know. You, at any point in life, you can change the direction of your story. Any point whatsoever, it's never too late. And that goes for everybody as well. If you're having a bad time right now and you're struggling with something, you know, it's just a chapter. All stories have good and bad in them, don't they? They have good bits, they have bad bits, or they won't be interesting, would they? I won't believe what's just happened. <laughs> honestly, honestly. Hi, Miguel. <laughs> um, oh, what amazing people. Absolutely amazing place. Absolutely amazing. It's like, I understand now why they were sort of insistent on sending us to the police station because they set up for it there. They can talk you through everything. It's really simple, really easy, but you would not believe it. I'm sat down with this policeman 
and he's trying to speak some English for me, which was actually really good. He speaks really good English. Um, and he's asking me about sort of, you know, what happened and I'm explaining that the, the window got smashed. We'd only been gone, you know, about an hour and a half, not very long. We were on a nice street and I'm explaining it all to him. And then he's asking if anything got stolen. He's asking me like what we do, what I do, where, you know, where do I work? Do I live in my van and all this sort of thing. Um, and I just thought he was just asking a lot of questions and then he was like, oh, I've got a van. Did you see it outside? It's parked out front. Um, I've got a camper van and my dream is to live in my van and be able to travel in my van. Um, but he's got like a young kiddie at the moment, so he can't do it and he just gets away like on weekends and stuff like that. So we're asking where we're going next and explaining that we're going to Portugal and he was saying how he loves Portugal and then we sort of did all the paperwork and everything and then we even took a selfie so I'll show you that he was like do you want a selfie and I was, yeah definitely put that on my channel um, and I was explaining to him obviously we do a channel so he was like write down the name write down the name I'll subscribe to the channel because <laughs> he loves like van channels and stuff um, and then he took me outside and showed me his camper van what an awesome guy so thank you miguel because you've really like restored my faith in the police and everything you've been absolutely brilliant and um, you made the process so much easier because it's been so upsetting and it's been really really difficult um, and he was laughing because he was like well it's content for your channel and i said well yeah my husband said that as well look on the bright side it's content for the channel i don't feel like that at the moment but you know um but oh just I can't tell you how easy Miguel made that process because it was so it's such an upsetting thing to go through when that's your home and somebody attacks your home and then you kind of feel like you're not really getting the response that you wanted from the authorities and you don't know the system either and the way it works in a different country and Miguel were just so helpful and and a fellow van lifer so keep going at it Miguel because you will get full time in your van at some point you will get there and if ever you're up in the UK you've got all my details on file so give us a shout um, because you know we're doing Airbnb and you're welcome anytime it's been absolutely a, a, a pleasure meeting you pleasure meeting you we're gonna end it there that's it for this week <laughs> I for real this time. I think we've had enough, honestly. We've had an explosion in van, we've had his window broken. I got me um my dread, I didn't tell you about that. My feathers on my dread got sucked into um cool box fridge fan <laughs> and all snapped off. So um And then yeah, I've just got in the back lost end off them. <laughs> I've just got in the back to get a glass of water while we're trying to figure out what to do about this very uh what what is it? Open air view here. Um, and, uh, and I've just broken my sunglasses, so yeah, they're so broken. Been... The, sun, the sunglasses that, that I've had for five years, that I was talking about in a couple of vlogs previously that cost me five euros, I've now broken, so they're gone now as well as window. It's literally <laughs> been one thing after another, and I think we're definitely done for this week. So catch up with us next week, see if we do manage to get the window fixed, and in the meantime, keep writing your own story, guys. You know, keep writing your own story and... Every, every day is a chapter, isn't it? Thanks for watching and don't forget to uh, hit the notification bell so you don't miss. Catch you soon.